testosterone, 14.7. That converts to 440. Like, look at the range, bro. If you're not at the upper end of the range, you have low testosterone. What's up guys, Derek, moreplates48.com. Today we're gonna to be reacting to I Want More Testosterone, all caps, by Hamza. It is a, um, this is a self-improvement channel in general. He says, who am I? I am Hamza. My purpose in life is to make more men like Adonis. I make videos on masculinity, success, fitness, mental health, as well as other areas of life that aid you in your journey from Jeffrey to Adonis. Is Jeffrey like the quintessential, like average chump? to Adonis. I went from being awkward, skinny fat video gamer in high school to the party kid in university, doing all the bad habits, living a life of pleasure, had poisonous effects on my mental and physical health. It took me a while to get on the right track. I had to leave everything behind, start a new life with a new mission. Um, okay, so we can get into this video. It seems right up my alley. A few people tagged me in it. Now let's get into it. Jeffrey is part of the average men who have low testosterone. He doesn't even realize what he's doing to his body. Sugar, fapping, late nights. Jeffrey lives exactly the opposite of how a man should. Testosterone? We don't need testosterone. Alpha males don't even exist. Shut up, Jeffrey. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being a pussy. I'm tired of not feeling as masculine or as powerful as I should be. I train. I've spent seven years in the gym. I've put in effort to become more of a man, but I still feel like I'm at a disadvantage. Every time I would watch one of those videos on testosterone and they would go into the symptoms of high testosterone and low testosterone, I knew which group I was in. And most guys, even if you don't have the confidence to admit it, you know to. And we need to change that. Adonis. Adonis is the ultimate male. That means that he has the highest testosterone amongst his tribe. That doesn't mean that he's an asshole, the stereotypical alpha male. It means he's the king, the leader, the one that we look up to, the most powerful, the most humble man that we aspire to be like. Adonis has testosterone coursing through his blood. That helps him conquer and explore. Adonis has the advantage of high testosterone because he does not partake in the modern activities and the addictions of the average man. We need to emulate that. You know. You Okay, does that actually play out in practical application? Is it the higher test you have, the more Giga Chad esque you become? Not necessarily. And this has to do with not just, like, there are so many things that play into it. Like, I know individuals who have high total Ts, but low free because of high SHBG. They have um, individuals who otherwise have high estrogen as a result of their high T, or like, there are numerous scenarios, even androgen receptor content. If you haven't seen my video on, this is what determines how much muscle you grow and your testosterone levels mean nothing. A bit of a, not a, eh, a little bit clickbait, but not really, because ultimately it comes down to androgen receptor density and expression at the genetic level. So even if you have a thousand nanogram per deciliter total, I'm sure you've seen guys who have more average looking test levels, but somehow are way more jacked and look way fucking sicker. Do these individuals have an advantage even though they have less testosterone? Yeah, they actually do because they have more androgen receptors to bind to and cause gene expression. So if you have greater AR content in the muscle and more myonuclei to actually differentiate, proliferate, and end up getting more uh, muscle protein synthesis occurring downstream to this whole you know, satellite cell, myonuclear donation. It's kind of a long process by which androgen receptors bind to testosterone, which then transcribes effects in the actual tissue itself and causes hypertrophy, um, proliferation of muscle cells, and you get new cells that then you can then induce in hypertrophy in, et cetera. And this is all contributed to by lifting, by diet, by androgens themselves, etc. And if you have more androgen receptors or more responsive gene expression at a transcriptional level in the next guy, your 500 might be more worthwhile than another guy's 900. And in some cases, you might have guys who are getting greater output because of their lack of transcriptional activity. So you have individuals who otherwise need to produce more hormone to get the same level of effect. So it doesn't always necessarily mean like, oh, if you have a 600, you would have been way better off with a 900. Maybe in some cases, but in some cases, it's simply not the case. However, there's, you know, we have seen generationally that testosterone levels and fertility itself has declined quite substantially, which we are going to be getting into shortly. And if you really need to be doing everything you should be doing to maximize your test levels and whatnot. Usually I make kind of silly videos, Jeffrey to Adonis and everything, but this topic's actually really, really serious. The average testosterone rates for men was over a thousand nanograms per, like, I don't know what the 
fucking metrics. I'm not a scientist, bro. But like a thousand number, like a nanograms to deciliter or some weird shit. I don't know, someone, uh, get Derek, bro, place more dates to tell us, right? It was over a thousand. Now the average that has been set by our country's healthcare system has a range between 200 and 1,000, 200 and 900. If you are in this range, you are considered healthy. Most young men now are about 500, half of what they used to be like. The old Okay, are they half of what they used to be like? This is a, I feel like a slight exaggeration and misconception. I did a video actually a while on this. First of all, when we talk about how many men produce over a thousand nanograms per deciliter, it's not very many, dude. I did a video on it a while ago, how many naturals actually produce more than a thousand. And it's a fucking small number. If you want to see what that is, I'll put up a card in the corner. Editor, please put up, this is how many naturals actually produce, more than 1,000 per day. You can check that out. And again, regression of these levels over time, how substantial is it? And these reference ranges, how much worse have the reference ranges gotten? How much more, I don't know, leeway are they giving for you to be normal? Well, they have decreased, you know, relatively um, substantially to some extent. Like you've had, uh, like it depends on the country though too. Like in Canada, they'll tell you you're like, you're over, you're way too high if you're at like 900. They will literally have a like 850 as the high end of normal. Whereas in the States and LabCorp in some places, they will have, you know, 1,000, 1,050 or 1,100 even as the top end. It depends on the lab. It depends on the location. It depends on numerous different things. Like in Europe, I think, I saw recently it was like, uh, you know, like an 850 or 900 for, uh, I think it was maybe uh, like Bucharest or something. I don't know, like it differs. It's, you know, different everywhere. But in general, you're seeing a range of like 300 to like 850 roughly is considered normal by pretty much every reference range standard. And the lowest that I've seen is like, I don't know, like 225 or something. And the highest I've seen is maybe like 1100 or 1200, depending on where you are, the lab, the location, et cetera. But ultimately, how many men are clearing that thousand number? You know, not very many. But how many did years ago? Like, was your great grandpa like a fucking genetic beast whose ball sack was that much more superior to yours and could make all more, like, way more muscle, was like Giga Chad esque and like the leader of men and blah, blah, blah? Well, we go into it in this video here where you have our great grandparents did not have 2000 nanogram per deciliter testosterone levels. And in fact, you do not see that significant of regression at the end of the day. However, this is based on, like if you look at longitudinal data, you can actually see comparison of some anthropometric characteristics of male soldiers in the 1800s versus over 100 years later in 1984. But again, there are obviously discrepancies in this data and this is comparing people in, I don't know, like I guess it's comparable conditions where you have male soldiers in 1864 to 1984. To some extent, again, the Number of soldiers, pretty, you know, substantial for you to compare to other than the sample size at the end here, a bit smaller, but again, 1946 still. What we see in general though is a trending upwards height, body weight, fat-free mass, etc. Like everything trends up despite the fact that testosterone levels are supposedly lower. Is this a result of like lackluster nutrition back then compared to now? Is it, you know, what is the result of? At the end of the day, we are seeing increases in Overall metrics from a body composition standpoint, performance outcome standpoint, is this just more population and outliers to pull data from though too? There is discrepancies, like I said, but ultimately we do see an average height that is higher. We see an average lean body mass that is higher. We see average bone mineral density that's higher. We see all of these things that are better despite the fact that testosterone levels and fertility are on the decline to some extent, depending on the country and you know, depending on a bunch of different metrics, but Ultimately, testosterone, testosterone levels have not declined as dramatically as you would have otherwise thought where you thought your great grandpa had a total test of like fucking 1500. Like, no, if he had a fucking adrenal tumor, then yeah, maybe he did, <laughs> but it wasn't the norm for everyone to have giga chad fucking, you know, 2000 nanogram per deciliter total test levels like would is often implied by some of the people who say how dramatically we've declined over the years. Now, again, for individuals who follow suboptimal lifestyle patterns, like, you know, smoking, non-stop, you know, fucking gaming all day, not getting outside, getting exposed to sunlight, eating a suboptimal diet model, having environmental toxins, you know, riddled in their lifestyle. This will decrease their fertility metrics quite substantially through a bunch of different mechanisms. You know, some of them interact with the estrogen receptor and cause negative feedback, this and that. There are a lot of different ways by which they have issues. But again, this is not to say that the testosterone level capabilities of the modern man is so substantially different than it was before. Like if anything, you have the resources and the know-how 
to maximize your levels far superior to that of any of your predecessors previously. So um, the opportunity is there and it's not like you are severely inhibited from doing that. It's just a matter if you engage in a bunch of different shit that could otherwise impair your ability to synthesize that much test. But ultimately, again, how dramatic is it? It's not as fucking problematic as you would have otherwise thought. But again, the severity of severity of this all, can't even talk. The severity of it all is compounded by multiple different factors and it is ultimately going to culminate in a dictation of what your endocrine profile really looks like on paper. But you have the resources at your disposal that you would have otherwise never had, you know, a hundred years ago that those individuals, you know, supposedly were the, you know, the giga chad test levels, you know, like the average lifestyle is simply not conducive to high quality performance nowadays. And it's not necessarily always translated on blood work metrics because there is things at the neurochemical level, at the signaling level that is not at the transcriptional level, just because your blood serum levels show something, it doesn't necessarily dictate itself and what it's actually doing physiologically. So you have to keep this in mind too, when you are going through shit, like you, you could have a normal total test level, but your SHBG could be so high from all of your different, you know, bad lifestyle choices that your free test is in the gutter. And then you actually have like hypogonadal symptoms, despite the fact that you have a giga chad looking total test level. So again, long ramble about what all this shit really means at the end of the day. And yeah, optimizing your lifestyle would be encouraged, but it's not like you're at a detriment where it's impossible to have the level that you otherwise was the norm, supposedly, you know, however many years ago. Overwhelming majority of us should be considered to have low testosterone, but because the range that most countries have set that they've just f***ed men over, the range is so damn high, you are still considered healthy if you have the same testosterone levels as a healthy 90-year-old man. And yeah, so ultimately, if you have a 350 total test and you go in to get blood work, <laughs> You see this fucking transition gets no pussy in brackets. Yeah, they might send you home, be like, you're fine. And maybe you might be hypogonadal and they'll be like, here's some Cialis, here's a fucking antidepressant, which is gonna further exacerbate things. Here's this, here's that. When in reality, you actually have an issue, but oftentimes most individuals don't necessarily need, you know, TRT at a super young age like they might think. Oftentimes it is lifestyle intervention, sleep hygiene practices, diet manipulations, exposure to fucking sunlight, getting on a proper circadian rhythm, not staying up till 4 a.m. and exposed, blasting your face with Netflix and games until 4 a.m. with blue light. Like that kind of shit is overlooked entirely oftentimes and people are just like, oh, what's like the pharmaceutical I need or what's this or what's that? You know, and that's where Merrick Health and other like high quality uh, medical platforms actually excel, where they actually interpret this for the patient rather than just haphazardly throwing you on medications. Here's your TRT script with HCG and fucking anastrozole, like a lot of clinics will do to make a markup on medications and sell a boatload of pharmaceuticals to you they may not otherwise need. It's good to be educated on all of the factors that go into this, because this could be just an indication that there is a bunch of lackluster areas that you are fucking up essentially in your life. Not necessarily that you, just at that transient period of time, it's not indicative of what would be otherwise represented if you had everything on point. So there's a lot of things to dial in before you decide if you need like pharmaceutical intervention necessarily. Even at the SHBG level, something that goes highly overlooked, I think, by a lot of people, just because your total test looks normal doesn't mean you're free as normal, you know, a lot of the time. A 90 year old man. There's some men who are 80 and 90 who still have high testosterone levels. And then there's us, the new generation. I tested my levels and I highly suggest you to do the same thing. Because I was thinking, okay, I do the right things, don't I? I live kind of a natural life. I don't eat much sugar. I don't drink much. I don't do a bunch of like the testosterone reducing shit. I'm not fat. I'm kind of lean. I'm muscular. I do some sense of competition. I speak to women. My numbers should be pretty high. I tested twice over a couple of months. And both times I got about 440. I want more testosterone. I don't know about you, but I want more testosterone bro if you've looked at the benefits of more testosterone pretty much everything that you want in life that drive that hunger for success the attraction from women the confidence and respect around men all of it comes from testosterone and our levels have dipped so much why i am pleased to report that your testosterone and estradiol results are within the normal range the normal range testosterone 14.7 that converts to 440 I this is guy canadian look at the fucking range bro 
Nanomoles per liter. Um, yeah, so like, again, like one of the first things too, like some guys actually fuck up even the time of day they go to get it tested. And that can have a significant detriment. Your diurnal rhythm of pulsatile secretion of testosterone will dictate that at some times a day when it's in the morning, you know, things will peak and then things will, you know, dip down and go back up and down and ebb and flow until at near the end of the day, they're at its absolute lowest. And then they will spike back up after you go to sleep. This kind of thing needs to be accounted for when you go get your blood work done. I'm not saying he didn't do that necessarily, but a lot of times people shoot themselves in the foot by like basic oversights from lack of education from the prescribing physician, well not prescribing physician, the person who gave them the blood test requisition form or the lab itself. Um, it's quite prudent to get your test done early in the morning. You know, if you're somebody who sleeps until the late afternoon, then you wait until like early evening and go get your blood test done. You know, not only is your circadian rhythm fucked up, but you're going at the wrong time of day. You know, it can make a significant difference. It could be like the fucking like 200 nanogram per deciliter difference on your total T to a point where you might think you are an old man when in reality you might be totally normal. I'm not saying that's what's going on by the way, by the way with him, but oftentimes I think some people will have like a 650 or like a 500 or whatever, and then assume I would be so much better off and I'm clearly deficient and I need TRT or I need to get on fucking gear or whatever. It's not always the case dude. Like there are individuals like, uh, I did a video on Lex Little's blood work and it was like totally normal. And the guy is like a fucking hyper performing athlete with sick fucking natural lifts, a crazy physique. And a lot of this is dictated simply by his genetic predisposition and consistency. Um, ultimately, a lot of it is genetic though at the end of the day, unfortunately. And that's just the way it is for some people. But dialing in everything you can to make the most of those genetics is what you should be doing before you then look to pharmace pharmaceutical intervention. I'm not saying what this guy is doing is wrong necessarily. I'm just saying, try to use this as a tangent to educate that I think a lot of people are haphazardly getting on hormones that otherwise probably don't need them. If you're not at the upper end of the range, you have low testosterone. The world around us and the society and the healthcare systems, the NHS, they will tell you that you're at a healthy level because they can't be bothered to help you because they probably, I don't know if this is conspiracy theory and like people sometimes don't like to hear that shit, but they probably don't want men who are higher in testosterone. They need men who are higher in testosterone, but they don't want men. Okay, I think this is a little bit of a dangerous statement here. Where was it? They probably, I don't know if this is conspiracy. Like look at the range, bro. If you're not range, if you're not at the upper end of the range, you have low testosterone. If you're not at the upper end of the range, you have low testosterone. Like that's an extremely misleading statement, dude. Like that would make people who are watching this assume if they have a 600, they're fucked up and they are, you know, a result of environmental toxins and this and that, and the fucking system is working against them and they need TRT. That's not the case, bro. That's not necessarily the case. I would advise everyone do what they can to avoid their exposure to things like fucking BPA, you know, get a goddamn glass water bottle, you know, install a filter in your shower. You're not exposed to a bunch of toxins and whatnot. Do what you can. Use a filter in your your water filter and then add the electrolytes back in afterwards, you know, and the mineral the trace minerals and shit. This is stuff that you could be doing to optimize yourself and dial yourself in. But if you get a 500 to 600 total T, you're not low necessarily. If you are asymptomatic and nothing is wrong and everything is dialed in from a biomarkers perspective, but at a transcriptional level perspective that is actually dictated in your physiological response to everyday life and you feel good, you're performing well, nothing's like fucking indicating otherwise you wake up with a goddamn morning wood like that's one of the number one indicators in my opinion do you have morning wood like that or are you addicted obviously if you're addicted to porn and fapping too much then that's going to that's a very very bad confounding factor that is going to fuck things up because you could otherwise have totally normal levels and just be desensitized as as hell from like a dopaminergic standpoint but if everything is dialed in and you're still not getting morning wood like yeah that could be an indicator of Maybe you have some issue, you know, maybe you need to look into pharmaceutical intervention, but if that is not the case, like look for actual biofeedback. Don't just use a transient number on a piece of paper as an indicator of bad function to say that if you have a, you're at the high end of the reference range that you're low, like, no, if you're in the middle, you're in the fucking middle, you know, it's not necessarily an indicator that you are suboptimal as hell. If you have a 600 or a 500, which I think is being perpetuated a little bit um, and some of the more current videos about like, you know, testosterone optimization and whatnot. But anyways.
the world around us and the society and the healthcare systems, the NHS, they will tell you that you're at a healthy level because they can't be bothered to help you because they probably, I don't know if this is conspiracy theory and like people sometimes don't like to hear that shit, but they probably don't want men who are higher in testosterone. They need men who are higher in testosterone, but they don't want men. Society and the world around you will do everything that it can to cripple your manhood and yet it will reward the men who passed that test and most of us are failing. I previously made a guide on how to improve your testosterone and there's far better people than me who can go through the science of that. So I'm not gonna waste your time and be sat here and like, oh yeah, like you already know this shit. Like, oh yeah, like uh, don't, don't drink so much and don't be fat and go to sleep and stuff. And it just pisses me off personally. This is almost like a rant video instead of a helpful one, just because I don't know about you if you're watching this video and you may have looked into this and you've wanted to improve your levels. Like I've tried to, it's a bit upsetting to, think that you've been doing a bunch of the, the healthy activities, you've taken a big step back from the normal world, you don't go to the f***ing pub every Friday, you don't eat shit, I don't eat shit food, and your levels are still lower than the f***ing 90 year old crippled man from the 1900s. We need to think of different ways, like there needs to be something else man. I think this is why so many men are just getting onto TRT, and I'm not really considering it, but I am somewhat beginning to be open to it right now. I want more testosterone. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Okay, so if you want to get a blood test and you want to get actual accurate assessment of your biomarkers, I would highly recommend you visit Merrick Health. Click the blood work and lab section. You can see the pre-designed panels I've audited myself personally. And this is not just for hormone panels. This is for actually assessing your diagnostics from a lipid management perspective, metabolic perspective, liver stress. Like there are a lot of things that go into indirectly supporting your hormone production that go overlooked. Even at the liver level, if you have some level of stress caused by even a supplement, you have no idea stressing you out, this might impact your binding protein production. It might impact your free testosterone. You get less psychoactive effects, less muscle building. Like you, There are so many things that go into it that it would be prudent to get an actual comprehensive package or complete package, or you can just create a cost-effective version of single biomarkers. You can just type in your fucking total testosterone here and get a high-quality free testosterone equilibrium dialysis if you're somebody who doesn't want to potentially get the slight differentiation from these amino assays that are kind of inaccurate. I would highly recommend using liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry for your totals, as well as equilibrium, equilibrium dialysis for your free, just like estradiol. I would always recommend getting an estradiol sensitive. For example, if you use amino assay, which is this one with the exact same blood test, you could get a wildly different reading than if you get estradiol sensitive using LCMS, which is why I always recommend using the audited and like actual vetted for blood tests, which unfortunately are more cost prohibitive, but you can tell are the most high accuracy gold standard reference points. In addition to that, markers that otherwise go overlooked that no one really even knows about, LP little a, assessing for cardiovascular disease risk, alpha fetoprotein, liver cancer, a bunch of other shit that goes overlooked that is actually factored in by people who are continuously educating our, themselves at Merrick Health, you can check it out. But ultimately, deferring back to this guy, and his statements about how he wants more tests, he's frustrated, you know, he's at the low end, he doesn't like it, he's tried dialing everything in. Um, I don't know, a few things off the bat I would recommend is checking the, the time of day that you're getting it tested. Do you have any biofeedback that indicates you are adver like below average of testosterone production? Have you checked your free hormone balance compared to your total? Um, a lot of these things go into what is going to dictate at the end of the day, how you perform, because ultimately performance and actual action of the hormone is what you care about, not how much is randomly flowing around your blood doesn't necessarily matter. It's at the gene expression level of what actually is signaled to happen. So it's not always a bad thing if you have a 500 or a 600. So for him, um, he's talking about TRT and like maybe considering it. Um, that's a personal decision ultimately if you try dialing literally everything in and at the same time you are still you know suboptimal as hell and you have you are symptomatic at that point yeah it's worth talking with a medical provider about you know options in my opinion but again there are a lot of things that go overlooked in my opinion as basic as micronutrient intake a lot of people who think they have a good diet have they literally gone on chronometer plugged their diet in and actually checked that there are no holes missing and that's not just following your rda recommendations that's actually following for your current body mass, your activity level, how much you are working, is the micronutrient intake you are taking in significant enough to support the endogenous hormone production that you are looking for? Do you have the substrate to actually fuel all the processes internally that are going to be as high enough as you need them, not necessarily high enough for a 120 pound girl? 
Like this is the kind of shit you need to consider when you are trying to dial in your diet model and being micronutriently rich enough in your food choices to actually support the endogenous hormone production you're looking for and ultimately at the transcriptional level what it's doing. So um, for him, you know, I understand the frustration. I understand the, you know, annoyance with trying to, uh, you know, dial things in and still seeing a suboptimal level. But I think most people who try and dial things in, like frankly, have not dialed things in for the most part. Like maybe at the basic level, you know, he stopped drinking, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't fap, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. Have you tried to, I don't know, do you go to bed at 10 p.m. every day and wake up at 6 a.m.? Do you make sure you avoid blue light at nighttime? Do you expose yourself to the sun when you wake up for a certain amount of time? Do you have uh, you know high quality relationships? Do you you know lift? I'm sure he lifts quite regularly. Is your diet micronutrient rich enough? Are you in a chronic deficit because you're trying to maintain a leaner physique? You know there are a lot of different factors that go into it, and like I said, it doesn't ultimately mean that if you have a 500 or 600, you can't build a good physique or have the representation of what would otherwise be you know like the giga chad fucking look you know there are a lot of guys that i know of personally who have very normal looking levels who have what would otherwise be considered like borderline like fake natty physiques essentially despite the fact that i've like audited their blood work myself and checked and like been convinced myself at the actual fucking biochemical level that they are indeed natural it is a lot of genetic predisposition, unfortunately. It may be unfair, but it fucking is what it is, and you can just work with what you have and dial in everything. And I don't know, like for him, I hope he figures it out, but um, I just would advise you be very, very thorough before you jump on something like TRT, because it is a lifelong commitment. And a lot of guys that jump on it, I feel like don't necessarily always need it. So just be mindful of that. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including Merrick Health, like I mentioned, my preventative medicine, hormone replacement therapy platform where you get connected with high quality doctors and patient care coordinators who represent the same quality of information I try to put out on my channel, for as well as self-service labs where you can literally just go pick out single biomarkers and then add it to a checkout menu and get your own pre-designed panel so you're not forced to use a big you know expensive panel but again these are audited by me and have more comprehensive insight into your current state and i would usually in most cases advise people go for a full panel to get uh, a full picture of what's going on because you're very limited when you are singling out biomarkers unless you were see unless you're just that concerned it's just like what's my total t like go for it. But I would still advise a lot of these other metrics, even from a hormone perspective, seeing your binding protein production, your free testosterone relative to your total, getting more insight into why things look the way they do and where there are actually holes that can be filled. Because again, there are a lot of different, uh, it's very multifactorial, like I mentioned earlier. So anyways, you can check that out. Anything else I'm associated with? Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, Pre-Workout Formulas, a design from scratch. Anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.